Hey, everybody. Um, just wanted to say I'm here. Hello. <laughs> and this is going to be very short. There has been so much going on that I, uh, as everybody says, everybody knows, uh, my head is rather spinning right now. Um, but I wanted to share a verse from Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 9. No, it's verse 6. Got to put these on. I can't read it. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. If there's anything right now we need is wisdom and knowledge. And these are times right now. The times that the Lord has put us in that we are privileged to live in. As you know, if I said, if I, as I have said in the last video that I posted um, with me talking, it is um, this coronavirus in China is something that I am trying. I could easily get obsessed with um, because I live there and I know some some people that live there, and it's uh, and I know how it is there. It's easily passed on simply because the sanitation system is just it's just not good but um <clears throat> and trying to be in the not overly not panicked at all but then not discarding it or not just dismissing it because of the times we live in and because and because of the things that are going on and what the bible says about pestilences and all these things the thought that crosses my mind when it comes to the deal of the century, this is another thing. I mean, you know, you go around in circles and talk about this and that and everything in the world. The deal of the century that President Trump announced to me, uh, not to, to me, but according to God's word, is a bad thing. Not because it's based on trying to do the best thing for Israel right now, not because of good intentions. Um, which I possibly, I mean, I have my thoughts. I really don't know, but what it looks like is good intentions. But God set his boundaries um, to Abraham way back in uh, when he told Abraham, this land I will give you. And he told him from this, 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 and this. You can go and read about it. I, I don't have it in front of me. But God set boundaries. Israel has never had all those boundaries, ever. Um, when they first went into the promised land, they didn't drive out all the people that God told them to do. So there were problems there. Um, David, he conquered quite a bit. But the boundaries never have really been what is described that God gave to Abraham. Having said that, the boundaries that Israel has now are not nearly all the land that God has promised. But to chop it up or give it to anyone else besides the people that God has appointed it for is against what God says. And he says in Joel that there, he's very angry with the nations because they've scattered his people and divided his land. It's not, it's not even the Jews land to divide, let alone any other nation. And <clears throat> with the, pestilences and the earthquakes that are going crazy and all that stuff. I feel like I'm just, we, we find ourselves repeating ourselves because that's what you, we see and it's what Jesus said. Um, but what I was thinking was, and I really, you know, I, I go back and forth. I, I really don't know. Um, but when I was watching President Trump and... Benjamin Netanyahu together on uh, that day on Tuesday. I I saw how pleased and enamored and so almost giddy Prime Minister Netanyahu was, and there has never been a, a, there's never been a reaction like that to any 
plan that any U.S. president has has given. And to me, that is a that's a that's a big red flag in itself. Um, I'm greatly dismayed by. As I've said before, I I'm I'm really I've always been very cautious about President Trump. Now I I get a kick out of him sometimes. He makes me laugh sometimes because the things he says, because he just says it. He doesn't worry about what anybody thinks. But at the same time, you all, please, as believers, please be be wise. God is, he's, 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 God is our only God. Jesus is our only King. And to put so much stock and so much rah, rah, rah into a man is extremely dangerous. You know, there's a lot of people, don't, don't misunderstand me. Don't misquote me or anything like that. But when Adolf Hitler was elected, there were many people that thought he was God's gift to them. He claimed that he was doing the, doing the work of Christ. And, you know, we have to be really, really careful in the praise and glory we give to any man. Um, we may not call it that, but it, it just seems that if we support someone, it's like they can do nothing wrong, really. Or we excuse the things they do that clearly go against what God says in his word. Or we, or we make excuses or we give explanations. This is what has really bothered me about some of the leaders, some of the Christian leaders who I have greatly respected have come out in, in support of this plan or they think it's this wonderful thing. Now, maybe in man's eyes, in what has been proposed in the past... This is the best one. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it goes against what God says. <laughs> it doesn't matter how little it is or, you know, how better it is or anything. You know, God is very exact in what he says about things. And just a thought. You know, when our last president was president, many people thought he was the one, and some people still do. But there's no way in my mind that Israel would be very enamored with him. And when the man of sin comes along, Israel is going to be enamored. They're going to really think he is it. That's why he's called the Antichrist. And I keep thinking, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that our president is that person. I don't know. But what keeps coming to my mind is who could most betray Israel except one that they totally trust? and love and adore. The last president could not really have betrayed Israel in any way because he obviously showed that he disdained Israel. He never showed any support. So there was no betrayal possible. But when they are, when they realize that the Antichrist is who he says he is, it's going to be a big horror to them because they trusted him. And whether or not this is, you know, I, I really don't know. There are, there are many people saying this, this, and this, and I'm just looking at it all, but I'm just telling you all, be cautious. Just watch. Don't jump on any bandwagon. Be very careful that what the Word of God says is your guide and not what looks nice or what feels good or what makes you have goosebumps or anything. Um, it's really easy to do that. But the Word of God is very clear. And it says in some place that um, even the elect, if possible, that even the elect could be deceived. Now, you know, I don't expect to be here. 
I expect to be out of here before the man of sin is revealed. <clears throat> but the precursors are all there. We've been saying this all along. The, the theme and the idea and the, <clears throat> like I said, the precursors are there. So the fact that we as believers could easily be deceived into believing a lie, not the lie, not, you know, the lie of being lost or anything like that, but to believe in someone and just be so enamored, it that is quite possible. And the only guard we have and safety we have is what God's word says. That's all I'm saying. Please be cautious. And, you know, there may be some real tough times coming even before we leave. So I just wanted to read something from Habakkuk. It says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the, uh, the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me walk on my high, my high hills. High places was on another, another um, translation. But the Lord is our stability, and he is the truth. No man, no man is the truth. Only Jesus, the man, <laughs> is the way, the truth, and the life. So, I wish you all a good um, Sunday. Uh, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. <clears throat> and uh, Tuesday's a big day, and who knows what's going to happen. But the Lord knows, and he's got us. Blessings. <laughs>